I know you are. <laughs> oh, yes. Kill him, White Run Guard. Kill him. Finish him off. Yes. Perfect. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Oh, my God. I'm burning her alive. You cannot resist the powers of this staff. Wahaha! <laughs> Flee for your lives, people of White Run. Can I use it on a chicken, though? Hada! Your horse has been frenzied. Look at him. He's attacking his horse. What an absolute savage. <laughs> What's up, guys? My name is ESO, and yes, we will be terrorizing White Run at the end of this video. I know it's your favorite thing to see in my videos but in this video guys we're actually going to be reviewing the creation club items worth five dollars the arm of the moon and the arm of the sun and some jewelry as well in fact some of the best jewelry in the game especially one ring that gives you a decent amount of magicka and also a buff to some of your stats as well but specifically the funnest weapon in this is called the arm of the moon this unique staff right here, which bears a sigil stone. It's one of the most powerful staffs in the game, but it basically has a random effect to do a fear or a frenzy enchantment on an enemy. And there is no level cap to this weapon, so it works on absolutely anyone in the game. You can literally go up to the Jarl of White Run and make him attack everybody and since he can't be killed it's just hilarious to watch. And of course guys if you want to check out my other Creation Club reviews check out the links down below in the description. You'll also find all my other guide videos and funny Skyrim content there as well. But now let's get started with this quest on finding the staff. So, okay so we've got to travel over here on the map to the far north east of Skyrim to Sky Temple Ruins. It seems there are a few skeletons here messing around. They are trivial enemies, however. Here we are, guys, at Sky Temple Ruins. Jesus Christ, there's a bloody skeleton behind you, ESO. You better take them out. Excuse me, sir. I've got these skeletons. What kind of necromancer work is afoot here? Get Rex up. Skeleton just immediately explodes. But here we are, just under the College of Winterhold. As per usual, necromancy is indeed afoot. Heading inside, we see Herineal, who is dead here on the floor. And he's got a necklace of minor deft hands and a pickpocket ring of sneaking. And his journal, which I guess is going to explain to us what on earth is going on here. First of Sun's Dawn, 4th Era 201, Master Elaine said that the Staff of Chaos was crafted by Loreth and passed on through the generations until it was stolen by Jagger Tharn, before being shattered into pieces by the Eternal Champion, who some of you remember, but probably none of you in the comment section. Let me know if you know where this staff came from. While the pieces may be lost forever, they say centuries later a descendant of Loreth sought to recreate their magic. The results were the Arms of Chaos, magical staffs that harnessed the power of the sun and moon. Yet one day, the mage dismantled the staffs and left them lifeless, convinced they were possessed by some unknown madness. It was by the Master's obsession to restore these artifacts, and in her honour, it has become mine. If only I could speak to her, I would know what to do next. 17th of Rain's Hand, 4th Era 201. Leave it to my late master to provide guidance on how to proceed. Going through her FX, I found a sketch of the necklace she often wore. It's identical in all ways but one. There is an orb set into the centre of the amulet, teeming with fire. If it's true that Loreth's magic allowed one to travel to distant worlds, then it's possible this orb is a sigil stone. If my hunch is right, the staffs are missing the same. 22nd of Rain's Hand, 4th Aero 201. My spirits renewed, I scoured the archives in Winterhold and found my path forward. I must find a way to summon three Daedra Guardians of the Sigil Stone. There's an altar on the eastern shore of Sky Temple Ruins bearing a Daedric mark. It may be what I need. 28th Ruin Hand, 4th Era 201. I've hit a snag. The rings used to activate the summoning circle was buried with my last master, which I foolishly had shipped to her ancestral home. To think she even gifted me with the ring and I mistook it for sentiment. I feel thicker than a net jelly. 
Still, complaining won't undo my mistake. The name of the ship was the Sea Stallion, and I wonder if I can catch it before it departs. The courier is yet to return and I'm beginning to fear the worst, that the ship had already left the dock long before my arrival. I'm not sure what to do at this point, I haven't had much sleep and my mind is starting to hear cracking noises when nothing exists. I wish my master were here still so I could seek her wisdom. They say there is a shrine of Archaea, the pass to the south. Come the morning I will visit it and pray for an answer. And here is the warlock's mark. And we also have the arm of the moon and the arm of the sun and the draft of strength just a random potion next to it so now we need to quickly head over to winterhold and search for some news of the sea stallion at the local docks so here we are at the city of winterhold's docks and i'm gonna have to get my khajiit fur wet here very unfortunately splosh as we swim across So in this building here, I believe they have the ship manifesto and we can actually see what happened to the ship and where it's currently located. Maybe it even crashed on its journey, as is usually the case with the Sea of Ghosts. So there's a note here. Loss of the Sea Stallion. Aha ha. Authoress. The new route you suggested may help us avoid the pirates, but not the storms. The Sea Stallion now lies at the bottom of Pilgrim's Trench and its cargo along with it. If I ever find that charlatan of a priest who paid to bless the ships, I'm going to rip the amulet of Kinnerath off his neck and strangle him with it. Anyway, if you know any divers who are looking for a challenge, I've enclosed a potion of water breathing and some scrolls with this letter. It won't do anything about the slaughterfish, but at least it will help you hold your breath. Well. Flame cloak, flame cloak, fire salt, and a potion of water breathing. I guess the flame cloak, because you cannot attack underwater, is the only way of dealing with the slaughterfish. Okay, let's fast travel over to Pilgrim's Trench, which is just, just here. Pilgrim's Trench. Now, I actually already did a video on this location, and there is like a chest at the bottom of this very, very deep area hidden underwater in Skyrim. In fact, you don't even know the location's there unless you swim far enough underwater there. And actually, there is a very sad story um, about uh, two lovers on this beach here, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. I've already covered it in my previous video. Just search Pilgrim's Trench into YouTube if you want to know the details. So let's go ahead and activate the scroll of flame cloak. We're not going to use the water breathing potion yet. We're just going to head deeper underwater. Lol, it looks like I'm walking. And as you can see, this location is very deep. We've only just come up across it. And now I'm starting to lose my health, so I'm going to use the potion of water breathing. For 60 seconds, there you go, and it just longs out um, that effect. And there's a coffin down here, which I assume, yes, the Sovereign Guard ban. Magicka regenerates 10% faster and increases your Magicka by 50 points. That's literally the best Magicka ring in the bloody game. Oh my goodness. Final lesson and Master Elaine's last words. If you're reading this, it means I'm dead. A fate, I'm sure, brings a smile to your face if you're standing on your head anyway. Otherwise, it would just be a frown, and we can't have that. That would be far too predictable. For those who don't appreciate a little chaos, maybe I'll finish this sentence by saying, Flying hawk loaf Hopefully now your frowns are facing in the right direction. After all, neither rhyme nor reason has a home here. Fire is water, up is down, neither wrong is right, and death is life. And so I like Delac the Lorath before me, I speak to you now, dear apprentice, from inside this box. A wise sage might caution you to be careful when you follow my path, lest you end up in the same place. But I have never claimed to be wise. To me, death is yet another adventure, another possibility to explore. The same should be true of your life. That is a touching note indeed. And the final lesson is a book based off this story, if you guys want to read that as well. So far, I haven't come across any slaughterfish. I'm not going to bother showing you guys where the chest is, but you can check out the wreck if you would like to. We're going to swim to the surface. You can't even see the surface until you get right near the top. It's literally that deep. 
So here we are, we've made it to the top of the water here. And you can actually see the beautiful shrine over there to the Daedric Prince. But we have another mission to go on over here to Sky Temple Ruin. Now we can finally summon the Dremora and finish off this quest. Hopefully we're not attacked in the process of it, but you know, we usually are. An Oblivion Summoning Circle, very much like the one that is hidden in the College of Winterhold. Oh boy! Oh boy! Give me, give me, give me a weapon. Jesus. And some elven arrows. Get out of here, Flame Atronach. Oh, no, no, that's not a good spell to see. Ah, please leave me alone. We can take him out easily. He's not very accurate with his spells. Nah! That's the sound he makes when he tries to cast something. Why is his Frost Atronach running away? What the hell? I think I think his Frost Atronach is, you know, trying to give me a hint. Please free me from this Daedra. No problem, bro. Oh, boy. Not your shock spells. They hurt a lot. Oh, my God. It's actually going to kill me. Oh, my God. I need a bloody potion. If I have this 40% resist shock, then I'm actually going to have 80% damage reduction, including the helmet of the armor I'm wearing. Then I'm going to use a potent poison on my weapon. And I need some healing potions right now. My god, he's running so quickly, I can't get him. What? Did that arrow just go right through it? Okay, that was weird. Oh yes, we've paralyzed him. He's screwed. Absolutely screwed him. Destroyed. Oh, that was a bit of a tasty battle there. He's got the green sigil stone, as you can see. Picks right out of his nose. And an iron warhammer and dagger, which is super strange. Now I can craft the moon weapon, but we're going to need to take out this Daedric armoured opponent in order to craft the final weapon. If I can keep... Yes! <laughs> I'm so lucky. We've actually paralysed him and had the easiest time ever. Let's use the unrelenting force shout on his body. He's still in statue form. This is the best man in the world at musical statues. Summoned from oblivion itself. Do not cast a spell, bro. Get wrecked. Orange Sigil Stone. Now we have the sun itself. And we also have a Daedric Sword of Inferno, which I don't need. So I'm just going to leave it on the floor there. And then there's the Blue Sigil Stone. Okay, so now we can finally use the Sigil Stones to craft the ancient weapons, including two staffs and one amulet. So now we can fix the Warlock's Mark. Making Conjuration spells cost 30% less to cast. It's decent and it's going to use up the blue Sigil Stone. But I mean, you know, it's not the best thing in the game. And now, guys, we can go to an enchanting altar and finish off our staffs. In order to finish this quest, we had to come all the way to Solfheim to tell Mithrin where we can find a staff enchanter just here. And now we can use this to finally finish off the Arm of the Moon and the Arm of the Sun. Starting with the Arm of the Sun, and then the Arm of the Moon. There we go, guys. Let's have a look at these weapons. So the Arm of the Moon. Starting off, a random chance to demoralize or frenzy a target for 60 seconds. Now this actually makes it one of the most powerful staffs in the game because it doesn't have a level requirement, which means you can actually frenzy anybody you fire this staff at randomly, or even make them run away. They're either going to run away or start attacking people close to them, so it's just going to create absolute chaos. Then we have the Arm of the Sun, which also looks pretty epic. Burns the target for 20 points, with a 30% chance for Frost and Shock to do 20 points of damage. Again, this is not the most powerful staff at all. But if you're using it in conjunction with the Arm of the Moon, you're going to have plenty of time to kill people. Personally, though, I think the Arm of the Moon is ridiculously powerful. Let's have a go, shall we? Hada! Your horse has been frenzied. I don't think so. I don't think so, mate. Look at him. He's attacking his horse. What an absolute savage. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you please leave me alone? 
Oh, he's dodging it. He's dodging it. And he's frenzied. He's frenzied. Boom. Mr. White Run Guard is killing his own horse. Now he's running away from the horse. And this horse is helping me out. My goodness, what on earth is going on here? Let's head into White Run. The cow goes into a frenzy and flees for his life. Can I use it on a chicken though? It's too fast, guys. Boom. Oh my god, it's it's oh my god, I've never seen a chicken move so fast in my life. The white run guards are attacking each other. It's complete chaos. Complete chaos, guys. Boom. He's fleeing for his life. This white run guard is also fleeing now. Let's set him in fire for good measure. Wah ha ha ha! Man, the animation for walking with two staffs is kind of ridiculous. Lol. Hello, people of White Run. I come in peace. Ha <laughs> ha He's terrified. He's running for his life. Chaos. Absolute chaos. Oh my god, I'm burning her alive. Oh yes, Jenisa. You cannot resist the powers of this staff. Wahaha! <laughs> Flee for your lives, people of White Run. She's a frenzy. Coletta seems to think she can kill me because the staff. <laughs> Coletta is frenzied beyond belief, my friends. Ha excuse me. Boom. The white run guard is frenzied. He's angry now. Oh my god. The locals are just killing each other. There's nothing we can do. Jesus, the white run guard has a mind of his own. Let's set fire to him just for good measure there. I love watching the citizens of white run attack each other. It's my favorite thing to do. Let's see if we can create some chaos with the Jarl. I know you are. Ha 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 ha. Oh, yes. Kill him, White Run Guard. Kill him. Finish him off. Yes. Perfect. Oh, you you fear me, do you, old lady? Ha ha ha. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, what's going on in here? Even the Jarl of White Run is attacking me. We'll see about that, Mr. Mr. Jarl. The Jarl of White Run has gone crazy in his old age and is attacking everybody, friend or foe. Look at him, he's just waving his sword around wildly. Everybody is frenzied. Nobody knows what's going on anymore. It's complete chaos, guys. Complete chaos. Ha ha ha. Complete chaos. What are you going to do, guards of White Run? Enchant this. My bounty is only 330 gold. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'll pay it off. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. My final observation of whether these items are worth it or not. Ha 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 Now, personally, I think the Arm of the Moon is a super powerful weapon and it's really fun. So I actually really enjoyed using this weapon a lot more than anything else so i'd actually pay for this and the quest to go with it made sense and it was like quite fun i guess so you know that's nice but um mainly it's just the arm of the moon being a pretty fun weapon the arm of the sun in my opinion is actually quite weak later on in the game it's good at the start of the game but weak later but, um, you know, you can make of that what you will. And with that, we have reviewed all of the new Creation Club content that Bethesda has just released. I hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos. I have a lot more Skyrim content planned and coming out in the future. So make sure you subscribe for that. And thank you for watching, guys. I've also got some cool merchandise on its way. The Get Wrecked t-shirt will be making a return in the new shop linked down below in the description. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, I'll be expanding on what you guys can grab for yourself. And guys, thank you so much again for all the support on these videos. I really do appreciate it. Just you guys watching, having a laugh and commenting down below and leaving a like, you know, it all helps so much. So thank you very much for that, guys. And I'll see you in the next video or you can even catch me live streaming on my second channel also linked below.